Tonight on Border Security. Customs isn't letting this target out of their sights. If you've got something else there, yeah. tell us now, because we're going to get you to take your clothes off. It's hard to believe what some people try to bring into the country. What we have is some double-sided swords. And immigration makes a startling discovery. It's an instruction on how to get from Changi Airport to Sydney Airport. This passenger just arrived in Sydney on a flight from Hong Kong. He claims to be a tourist, here for a week to see the sights. But according to a tip-off received by customs, he might actually be trying to smuggle drugs into Australia. At the barrier, a frisk confirms customs suspicions. Watch the reaction of the customs officer performing the frisk. He's felt something around the waist. This questioning will continue in a private room. Eight million passengers are processed through quarantine every year. For most, it only takes a matter of minutes and is relatively harmless. When we ask you what you have, you must tell us everything that you have. If you have dry fruit, you must tell us that you have dry fruit. Mm -hmm. OK? All right. Okay. Have you taken any food off the plane, sir? Have you taken any food off the plane? No. Food can mean a lot of things. Quarantine officers define food as anything that goes in your mouth. Stone fruits are prohibited and are not allowed into Australia. They are a high quarantine risk. I ticket the food, I bought the food again. She can check everything. But last time I bought this, pickled the food, she said fine. But this time she said no. So she said no, she can take it away. She also put some bad record for me. For this passenger, the process is a little daunting. He declared most, but not all, his food and is now concerned that his record will be blemished. She said, are you not to tick everything? So it confused me. Food, food is many, many things, yeah. okay? OK? But Tell you can't make so one bad so record one in here. Right. Just this yeah, one. She said, ha, ha. last time I bought it in, no, no, this no, time no, I can't. No, yeah. Nothing with last time, OK? That is by rule. I tick the food. No, 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 no. Food is the other thing. OK, you need to listen, OK? Yeah. If you talk every time, you need to listen too, OK? Yeah. If you're talking, talking and talking, yeah. you need to listen too. I listen too. No, no, no. I, okay. I, 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 I absolutely Let listen to her. Meanwhile, over in customs, there's more than just the incoming passengers to keep an eye on. Mail and parcels flooding into the country are also checked. And a small courier package has just caught their attention. Take it on straight to the X-ray. Run it through and have a look. It's a package coming from Hong Kong. Uh, the description of the goods is document. Um, it was detected out of one of the depots at first and they x-rayed it. There was an anomaly in the image. Um, so deciding it needed further investigation, the package was brought back here so we could have a second look at it. Customs call these packages HVLVs, an acronym that stands for high volume, low value. Usually the only things in these envelopes are documents. Well, we've got documents, but in the middle here there's um can't really tell what that is. We're going to have to have a closer look at that. It's got a very dark blue-black image in there. Yeah, something a little bit denser than documents. Well, high volume, low value consignments, we do 100% check on those. Um, there might only be small things, but you can do things like credit cards, money, um, small narcotic uh, detections are found in them. Um, prohibited imports, often things that are not far from being a document. Well, we can see it's definitely doc documents, so we'll take it into the deconstruction room and have a further look. I'm a true person. I'm telling you everything. Back in quarantine, this passenger thinks that he who yells loudest is telling the truth. When she asks you that mm. which bag is the food or what sort of food you got, you mm. said biscuit only. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't say only. I didn't say only. I said I got a big seat. Biscuits and the food. That's and it. food. Yeah. He told her that he only had biscuits. OK, this is the item. OK, it's not allowed in. That's it. If only that was it. Why are you hiding something? No, no, no. If I want to hide something, I won't take the food. No, 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 you take the food. That's all right. Your That's food, good. you are allowed to check yeah. everything. Yeah, you're all right. OK? But she said, make my bad record. The next time you bought it in, you get a fine. 
Yeah, next time you need to tell everything that yeah, I got everything here. I won't get in trouble. Next, uh, ten times already, I never get in trouble. There still seems to be a little bit of confusion. The officer is trying to explain the process and the passenger is still refusing to listen. Why, why she use the words? No trouble. Warning no words, trouble. for what? Okay, there is no trouble. If you tell something... She said that we'll make check a better record in here already. No, this, there is nothing record here. She put it in the oh. record. I've been 31 years in customs. So now I've, I've seen them sending in many things in many different ways. This courier package should only contain documents, but X-ray scans showed something different. I just want to try and open this package so it can be sealed back up. Well, we don't know yet how, what, one, what we'll find in there, and two, how they'll, how customs will run with it. If it's narcotics, then um, we'd be very careful how we're handling the evidence anyhow. Um, it would be then forwarded on to Australian Federal Police. We've now got an inside envelope. <clears throat> the quarantine x-ray at Sydney Airport. It shows a detailed picture of everything in a passenger's luggage and you'd be amazed at what's in some people's bags. What we have is what looks like some double-sided um, sorts. So we're going to uh, get customs down. We're going to have a look at them and uh, get customs down. And then the colour of it shows that they're a heavy metal or a heavier metal. I'm going to get some expert advice. Customs officers first noticed this young man. He seemed nervous and didn't have much luggage. Now immigration is interested in him. Now the first question is, why have you travelled to Australia today? As a tourist. Immigration is concerned about Cheng's intentions in Australia. Okay. And how long do you intend staying? It's a long distance to travel for such a short time. Ross from Immigration now has to work out if Cheng's actually a tourist or here for other reasons. I note in the back of your passport, Cheng, you have a note to contact the uh, hotel. Yes. Okay, are you aware of the costs associated with staying in that particular hotel? I don't know. I don't. OK. That particular hotel is quite an expensive hotel to stay in. How much money do you have with you? Approximately 1,500. During your stay in Australia, what do you intend doing? I will be walking around. OK. Do you have any confirmed plans of where you will be walking around? No. He's not able to give me any firm or convincing information at all. Uh, basically, the guy's got absolutely no idea why he's here. Uh, he's got made absolutely no preparation for his journey at all. Now, during the period between 2001 and now, had you had a job? I was working. OK, whereabouts were you working, Chen? Malaysia. Okay, do you currently have an employment? Same. Male. No, not now. The immigration supervisor has been informed about Cheng and is now working on the case. If somebody who's been unemployed, all of a sudden get this money to get to Australia, there's no way, I mean, he's going to go back for four days for holiday. So they have other motives anyway. And it's now up to immigration to find out what those motives are. Meanwhile, over in quarantine, one passenger faces losing these swords. While it's not necessarily illegal to bring weapons like these into the country, you must declare them for inspection. OK, how many of these are you carrying? I've got two this size and a table sword about this big and a box and foam. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm just going to have to call customs in regards to these, okay. Uh, just basically because they'd be classed as a weapon, I believe. So, yeah, just wanting to make sure that Customs sees it and is they okay with it. Under the Customs Act, dangerous weapons can be seized at the border. Buy three, you get one free. <laughs> and uh, you hang them on the wall. And one of them is a table sword. Um, a lut in Israel. Yeah. Souvenir. The replicas. My sister brought some back and she didn't get me one. So I thought I'd get my own. <laughs> yeah. They're okay? The swords may look deadly, but as they're obviously for ornamental use, Customs is happy to allow them into the country. The passengers are free to go. Immigration is concerned that Cheng has dishonest intentions in Australia. Okay, what source of income have you had in the last three months? I have income. Okay, how was that income derived? From parents. With no job to go back to in Malaysia, Ross suspects Cheng may be in Australia to work illegally. During your stay in Australia, is it your intention to look for a job here? No. No. What I'd like to do is to present a case of cancellation to you for the following reasons. On two occasions, he's provided uh, misleading information to me in relation to his uh, employment status and also the reasons behind him being funded and the arrangements for his travel to Australia. The information that I've been trying to extract from him is not forthcoming. We'll just go ahead and do the cancellation and um, see what he says to that. The question remains, though, where does an unemployed young Malaysian man get the funds to fly to Australia? The answer may lie in his bag. A passenger has been tracked by customs and frisked. They suspect he's carrying drugs and he's now being questioned. When they did a frisk on him before, the, the officer felt something around his waist. Can you ask him what it is? Yeah, about a week ago. He said he's got a back. You know, he's got an injury in his, on his back. And this, mm. this, 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 let's try to fix him up. All right. Just ask him why he's sweating so much. He said it's because it's hot here. Yeah. All right, what we're going to if you've got something else there, it's not a back brace, you should tell us. OK, no. tell us now, because we're gonna, what we're going to do is to get you to take your clothes off and we're going to have a look anyway. So if there's something there, OK, let us know now. Is there anything there? It's not a back brace, is it? Do right things. I'm in quarantine, this passenger is still not too happy about officers pointing out that he's brought prohibited food into the country. I want to do right person. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Doing I'd, I'd, a good thing. Okay. I want to. I never get in trouble in the police or something. Why she put some record no, 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 in no. here? If we are taking something, we need to keep a record. Okay. We need to write it down. Okay. Of course, you make a bad record in here. Look carefully at this person because the last time tell us not to tell her everything. Yeah. It's not a court hearing. We haven't put a bad mark against his name. He has declared his food, which is great. He's done the right thing. He's asked what kind of food he has. He's just said he's got biscuits. But luckily enough, we've x-rayed it and we found that he has stone fruits, which are not allowed in. When seeds are imported, they can transmit diseases which could decimate Australia's $270 million stone fruit industry. Look at me like an enemy. No, 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 okay? no, not enemy. I want to do right you, things. You are our customer, OK? I'm doing right yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take my food. You can check whatever you like. You? You can tell me these things you can't body in. I'm saying, OK. You are a customer, OK? That's bad record in here means I'm not the right person again. Damage my personality forever. This time I bought these things in. Last five times I also bought this. This is my flavor. Next time say no. I don't know exactly that. You should have you released the book. Well, it's not exactly a book, 
But perhaps he should have taken a look at one of Quarantine's pamphlets, which inform on what is and isn't allowed into the country. Put the recorder in here. Put the recorder in here. She said, next time you might get a larger fine because you are not right. She not treated very professional, no fairly to normal person. Okay, thank you. I wasn't going to give him a fine. I just wanted him to understand our role here is to try and educate passengers coming into Australia. I think he was just had a bad day. <laughs> and over at immigration, a document has been found in Cheng's bag. It might solve the question of why he's here. It's an instruction on how to get here, there and everywhere. Oh. A pamphlet that tells Malaysians where and how to get work in Australia. Someone's gone to some effort to get Cheng out here and to tell him what to do. Right, from Changi Airport to Sydney Airport and how to get to Shepparton. Shepparton, he's going to be fruit picking. Yeah, exactly. Cheng's trip to Australia is over before it began. Immigration officers are satisfied that he's not a genuine visitor and that he was intending to work here illegally. On the back of one of the pages here is a, is a clear indication of how to get from Sydney Airport to, as it states here, Shepparton. It looks like they're trying to get people down there individually because any group movement might attract attention. It's probably a, a very well organised scam to employ illegal workers. Illegal workers are easily exploited, often overworked and underpaid. What normally happens is the employer takes his cut out before they get paid out. Please advise Cheng that his visa is now cancelled. He is no longer the holder of a visa and he is now in immigration detention. It is still not known who is behind Cheng's travels. There is a lucrative trade in organising people to work illegally in Australia and Cheng was another victim. Cheng was sent home three hours after arriving at Sydney International Airport. In customs, officers Jane and Andy are opening a suspicious package. For a magazine on the inside. And oh. that's our little blue-black images that we got on our X-ray screen. Yeah, it's not just documents. Oh. Certainly. If you can clearly see that, there's def they definitely look like diamonds. So six-sided, all look about the same shape. They'll have to be valued, and then um, this consignment will be passed on to one of our compliance assurance teams. Um, the consignee will be notified that their packages um, come under customs notice through an X-ray, and uh, goods inside were noticed that weren't documents, and they'll be asked to please explain. And then customs will take action from, depending on what the reply is. If these stones are diamonds, the unpaid GST could be worth tens of thousands of dollars. In Sydney, there's been an interesting development in the case of the smuggled stones. Customs has contacted the owner and the supplier of the goods and they've sent us a letter of explanation. They've also sent an invoice stating that the goods are cubic zirconias with a value of three US dollars. However, Customs has hired a gemologist to, just to make sure and he'll determine whether they're diamonds or cubic zirconias. Bill's been working with precious stones since leaving school. He'll be able to quickly determine if these stones are the real deal. Unset diamonds like that are duty free. So it's, due, it's the GST, it's the tax that they're avoiding. And then there's always the possibility of, if, if they were diamonds coming in like that, it can be used as a form of payment for, um, for other things, funding crime. By the look of it though, these stones won't be funding any serious crime. Well, unfortunately, um, the cubic zirconia. No, it's the least we know. <laughs> An accurate result, but one that's a little disappointing for customs. In one way, yes, but in another way, this is a really good learning curve because when you first see it go through an X-ray and the, the consignment's described as HVLV with documents, 
and then you can see on the x-ray that there's something else concealed in there and then you open it and, you, and there's an obvious concealment in there. Um, naturally you'd think precious stones because you would wonder why would anyone go to that trouble to conceal a few dollars worth of cubic zirconias. There could be any number of reasons, but the one that concerns customs most is the possibility that this could be done by criminals to see how vigilant customs is. One can only assume that they would see if the parcel would be pulled up. So if obviously the parcel's pulled up with the dummy run, then the chances of them sending the real McCoy through um, would also get pulled up. What is good that this is still detected by customs using the technology and the tools that they've got. I mean, HVLV, you're talking about several tonnes of cargo and the officers were able to detect these small ten little cubic zirconias. This passenger arrived from Hong Kong. After a tip-off received by customs, he was frisked. Now in the interview room, this drug courier has been stopped in his tracks. There's a package of glad wrap wrapped around his waist, uh, and inside that glad wrap is a black package, a, a plastic bag, uh, appears to be probably two or three kilos in weight. Uh, so I just made a small incision in the package, just a little bit of white powder came out, so we'll see if we get any burning from the machine. The 501 grams of pure heroin around his waist had a street value of over $300,000. The passenger was charged with importing a prohibited item. He pleaded guilty and is yet to be sentenced. Under questioning, he admitted to police that he would have been paid $40,000 if the shipment had gone through. Next week on Border Security. Can you get the van over here ASAP, He's please? We've got one. Got one. He's been hiding for years. Now immigration has caught up with him. I think he was expecting this day to come. A pensioner becomes the focus of a large search. We're now going to run our dogs on it, then we can go ahead and drill it. And officers want to know what he's got hidden under the blanket. Just found something which appears to be concealed. That's border security.